Welcome back to some professional StarCraft 2. No, not the professional StarCraft 2 you're used to, but the most popular game mode on the arcade. It's Direct Strike. Yes, the Wave Defense. This is the Global Grand Finals. $1,000 in the prize pool. Yes, money on the line. More than even an ESL Cup. And we have narrowed it down to two top teams. Let me introduce, in the top right, for the leaked investors, we have Demillion as Terran. In the yellow is Nova. You just named yourself Nova, and you have a board. Like, what is this? Is this a Smurf account? You didn't build an entire, like, 17 bases? Anyways. Nova. And... We have Jerzal with a, a bit more the base aesthetic looking great here as the initial battles start. We're going to have a quick tutorial on Direct Strike after we introduce the drunk, the drunk kittens. No, grumpy kittens. Triss. Kachar as Protoss with the beautiful, unfortunately not able to see, but the GDSL logo. Or at least the acronym there. And I'm Sucks, which, well, uh, we all have our self assessments. But Direct Strike, you might think of as just kind of an AFK simulator. You build your units, they battle it out. No! At this level, APM and Micro are actually incredibly important, especially since this is standard Direct Strike, not Commander's mode means it's very likely you're going to be facing the same or similar types of units, and whoever uses their abilities uh, efficiently is going to be most effective. So, for those who don't know, Direct Strike, every 20 seconds, a wave of units is sent out from each staging area. Uh, it rotates between the players, in this case, 3-on-3, three three, which is by far the most popular mode. Uh, but 3v3, so every 20 seconds, aka your wave gets sent every 60 seconds. Units will just keep going across the map until they are destroyed, or they time out after uh, your next wave spawns. It starts a timer. So they don't last necessarily forever, or you win the game. I guess that's another option. So, income is gained by getting gas geysers. Uh, gas geysers which go on the minerals, which has always been a little confusing. But that is essentially, the minerals and gas are combined in one. So each unit has a mineral cost. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm confusing myself. But essentially, you get more income from taking gas, and each unit has a set cost. Like, uh, for example, a zealot is 80, stalker's 105, sentry's 125, etc., etc. Um, and the more income you get, obviously, the more units you can build. Key parts are tacking up to tier 2 which unlocks your robo units, your uh, your starport units, stuff like that. There are no zergs here, and there will be no zergs throughout the finals, as Terran and, to an extent, Protoss have apparently come out to be the uh, favorites, especially in the coordinated uh, events here. So, in fact, uh, I, I, I have it on... Apparently, the Grumpy Kittens make great use of the triple Terran strat. Uh, as time goes on. Though, not in game one. A Liberator has been unlocked. A few other key points are the base defense. You have the cannon. Or the bunker, which are functionally the same. They're just aesthetically different. When you kill those, you get a one-time income bonus. And, of course, it makes it a little easier to push for the victory. Uh, obviously, your opponent's waves spawn closer to their base, so breaking through all of that, plus the initial defenses, uh, is a big advantage. Another, probably the largest advantage, is the center line. The center line is worth, I believe, plus one income. So, that doesn't sound like a lot, but your average minerals per second is, or your starting minerals per second are... Uh, 6.5. Each gas geyser you invest in is 150, and then it goes up to like 225, I believe, in a second. So it takes a while to pay off, whereas the center line uh, just grants you passive income. 
So the center line essentially is two gas gassers costing nothing. So, and this is a big tip and also why some people may have rage quit on you if you've ever played this. Uh, if you go for a gas gasser for yourself early on, you've just wasted a bunch of minerals that could be used to give your entire team si effectively six gas gassers of income. Like right now, the Grumpy Kittens is sitting on 50 more minerals per minute uh, because they've been able to maintain that center line. Now continuing to press forward. Yes, you can come back. And uh, of course, defensively. Thank you, Kachar, gifting subs to the people. Kachar! Here, oh, if you see him in the chat, then um, no, he knows what he's talking about. I think this is a good time to mention as well. Well, once that first goes down. First gas geyser. Are they both going to take it? Only one player is taking a gas. This is the most dramatic uh, thing you can do in Direct Strike. Besides, there's a lot of little strategy things happening here. You can probably watch the uh, uh, the cast slash coverage from actually good Direct Strike players. I'm just here to show the spectacle and give you the basics, and you can take them further. Thank you. All right, APMs currently. Ah, I think he's manually throwing grenades. Yes. At some point, we may get APMs higher than even your average uh, Metal League games. Even though your waves are usually dead. So if you consider that like a third of the time, you don't even have units on the field. Still quite, quite a lot going on. And it is almost all micro. So what are the unit compositions here? Liberators are obviously a, a big... Uh, game changer, but they're also very expensive. So if you invest in liberators, and I believe they're being manually controlled here to siege up as soon as possible, otherwise they kind of wander forward. They are very expensive if you don't use them well. Disruptors coming through, they will disrupt it. Units don't do friendly fire. In case you were wondering if you pulled a has there, no. Disruptors, widow mines, they don't do friendly fire, so. You don't have to worry as much about that. No, you don't want to waste them either. Anti-armor missiles. Wow. Nicely micro. Great spread. Dorito dusting the whole army there. And holding on to one is Triss here, following it up. What are we going to see? Anti-armor missile. Oh, oh, oh. the anti-armor missiles are definitely being micro. Uh, there's no... <laughs> they are never that good for me. So, for those who don't know, you can actually... I don't know if we can actually see that screen. But uh, if you're playing, there is a menu where you can disable uh, automatic control of ability. And that way, you can take manual control. Or uh, you can disable it on the unit specifically, if you'd like. Well, here... The Grumpy Kittens have been banking on their... Can we see their total forces in their base? Not quite. But obviously the kittens very grumpily bashing their way forward. You remind me of the end from Utopia. I mean your face, not personality. I got it. Thanks. <laughs> Now for the hardest part, deciding when to end the game, or how to end the game. As the waves get closer and closer, uh, it gets harder and harder to stack up your own and actually put together that game ending push. Liberators don't attack buildings, either here or in multiplayer. Many of the same uh, concepts and principles of Lion Bow. The units have very similar or the same stats, though their behavior might be slightly different than multiplayer. Commander's mode is much more popular, but for the same reasons I think that co-op is more popular than ladder. Uh, it's just, it's more forgiving, asymmetrical. There's a lot of cool units. Here, we're real sweaty with the micro. And, well, you see blinking on both sides to buffer for the bio. Disruptor shock comes out. Anti-armor missile activated on the liberators. 
Interference Matrix scrambles the second Raven. They scramble each other. As the Liberator still unloading underneath. Couple Vikings added in, but the Bio Army for Tamillion enough to clear the field and push back. Don't use multiplayer strategies. Uh, yes. Don't, don't use actual multiplayer strategies. The units are the same, but the way they're applied. Imagine you could actually micro and do those strategies. And that's why we see a couple Ravens, a handful of Liberators, and a bunch of Bio. I am hard-pressed to believe the vast majority of you watching this could control even one of those units well in multiplayer. But in Direct Strike... Maybe it's better. I don't know. Give it a shot. I don't know. The Liberator count really building up for Jirzal here. As the Stalkers are just not able to match it. The Vikings coming up to challenge. But followed up. So the timing of the waves. It's always the same follow-up. We have Tamillion following Jirzal's wave with this big bio army. That helps clear the air. Uh, but unfortunately, the Liberator's already gone by the time the Marines are able to get uh, into position. Still, those Reaper grenades coming out. Can you target fire? You can target fire to some extent with abilities. Uh, like anti-armor missile. But you can't target fire the auto attacks of Unix. Except by how you position them in your base. So it's, it's directing them. As opposed to direct micro, if you would be. So here, positioning them at the front means that your wave will get there as soon as possible. Positioning them further back means you want to build up and wait for your teammates as much as possible. Which is what uh, I'm Sucks is doing here with his air units. Trying to keep them alive and hope his teammates can catch up and help push forward. Oh, a wave of grenades. Anti-armor missile in the center. We do have, uh, at the front, two players for the leaked investors with the air army. Even some battle cruisers being added in further back. Battle cruiser is quite expensive here, but gives some more anti-air capability than the, the liberators themselves. Void Ray. One thing we should be checking definitely is the upgrades. Looks like Kachar has gone for plus two, plus one. There's all actually has no upgrades in the air. Upgrades can be added. Your standard upgrades. Uh, and for bio, I imagine they make a huge difference. Two, two done. Yeah, all, all things like Yamato, Stim, they all have a cost. Uh, usually relatively cheap compared to the unit, but they don't come with most of their abilities. They must be upgraded just to add that extra cost on top so they're not too powerful. Looks like 2-2 bio on both sides. Triss upgraded plus two ship weapons. No armor up there. But now the waves are starting to get kind of spread out as the air superiority is a little different than the ground. Disruptor shot slamming! Big volley! Liberators, I'm out of position here, and I think I'm gonna take this time for a moment. I always love cinematic mode, so just just stick with me.
Welcome back. I'll take a few more moments later on. I don't know if I want, after that, I don't know if I even want damaged health bars. I think the game still holds up. And I had to turn down my graphics settings a bit because, well, you know, direct strike, so. Well, unfortunately, many of you will have the experience of doing that as at some point you get to like 400 supply armies for every player. We now currently have two players passing 100 average APM. In fact, Gerzal, oh, I think he's been microing the Liberators and his Ravens constantly. And and part of Kachal's beginner guide, uh, not Kachal, I'm sorry, I conflated the both. Oh, game one is over. We were on the edge, but GG. Do we get the stats after? <sighs> we don't get the stats after. Um, on the end of the game, when you do it live, you can see the damage dealt and all that, but... Ugh. Yeah, on Kachar's beginner guide, he's like, here, set up rapid-fire hotkeys for every ability, because you need to micro super hard. It's like, a lot of people think of Direct Strike as the chill casual mode. Well... Boy 99 has gifted five subs to view. Like game one, if you could summarize for us. Now you know what. In, in case you're wondering, um, how do I know how good I am? How do I know how good these players are? Well, let me introduce you to dsratings.com. ds-ratings.com. Is your EP large enough to match one of the? Uh, 271,879 players of Direct Strike? Well, if we had to pick one player... Fun fact, that's more than 1v1. Uh, in standard 3v3, which is the game mode we're playing, it looks like it's not Kachar. He got beaten down by Red Strike. Last time I checked, it was Kachar. But, uh, currently ranked second ds-ratings.com it's also shown in the load screen of the game commanders is is more popular i think commanders is overall more fun but in a more competitive just like in co-op all the fun stuff went there just like in commanders mode because it wasn't competitive i uh, i I, I did gloss over probably the most important actual strategy part. How many refineries did we have at the end? I, I didn't. <laughs> As defining that income is incredibly important. One for each. Oh, tier two rush, by the way. For Kachar here. Uh, very expensive. No units to start. Giving up the center line. Are we... Ah, yes. One Protoss. Two Terrans versus... Is this three Terrans? Yes. Three to... We've, we've finally cut out all the weak races. Terran. Fully represented. It is triple Terran versus Protoss Terran Terran right now. Yeah, but the key point to take away, and this does not hold true in Commanders, because in Commanders you also have a lot of static defense. So I will touch on Commanders. I can recommend Incursus, by the way, uh, who's uh, been on the channel before. I feel I feel like uh, I'm on PBS. We've had an Incursus in the studio before, um, who does a lot of Direct Strike Commander stuff. But Commanders is a little different, because you do have kind of a built-in defense. But in standard mode, this mode here, uh, if you if you invest in that refinery, they're just going to have more units. They're going to take the center line. And if you're investing in refinery over tier two for better better units uh, or upgrades, what are we doing? Oh my god! What is this? This is TVT in 2015. Mass liberate. 
Thank you, Jurzal, as well. Liberating both his wallets and Kachar's liberators. And then sieging up in a really awkward location. Kachar counters with an auto turret. With just enough HP on that Raven. But this time, the leaked investors against that heavy tech style of the Grumpy Kittens manage to rack up. Oh yeah, you get to place a trophy as well. A lot of the direct strike. This is what direct strike premi uh, premium, premium gets you, by the way. It gets you all the fancy buildings. You can level up and get all those fancy worker skins. You get like 5,000 different sprays and most of what they do is slightly reduce the FPS of everyone on the map, but otherwise no pay to win aspect. I don't know if that's actually true. I mean, it's probably a little true. <laughs> Except when people start spamming the fireworks on their bills. <laughs> Thanks, take two on the siege. Yeah, I haven't done much to really acknowledge the strategy. I apologize. 24 Reapers! Wait, okay. I, I sometimes get distracted by this. The units count is showing the units on the field and in the staging area. So sometimes they do double up, which does make the units tab a little misleading is a nice way to put it. what's considered some of the better commanders, you can actually go to dsratings.com. And what is the other site, DS Stats? I was surprised to find, personally, um, that overall the commanders are pretty balanced. Like, uh, here you see Dahaka is a number one at 52%, Manx 51 some of the weaker ones are Artanis, Kerrigan, Phoenix, but overall, most of the commanders are quite close to 50% win rate. I mean, when you balance them out with having other commanders on the team, then, oh, and we have, these will all be in the description after you like and subscribe. There's also direct strike stats, which is kind of like SC2 replay stats, but for direct strike, look very similar as well there you go you can look at graphs and fancy stats and all of that the top commanders are Han, Han and Horner here at least on replays uploaded Stepman to Hakka I think that's just from people using direct strike stats but if you want SC2 replay stats for direct strike there you go D well you're probably gonna have to follow the link unless you're gonna remember dsstats.pack77.org I'm only- I'm 99% sure they're not looking for your credit card info, just your build orders. That is an important point that you're making in the chat here. The Liberators in Direct Strike and the Siege Tanks to some extent. So units cannot just be sieged up at any time. But once enemy units are within a certain range, they can. So what the players are doing is sieging essentially on the edge of their potential range in order to ideally have the liberator sieged up and oh my god the new balance patch is gonna ruin direct strike <laughs> the scrambles i honestly well so in the new, and, and multiplayer balance patches do in some way get transferred to direct strike. At least they have been in the past. Uh, there will be a nerf to interference matrix, auto turret, have a lot less HP in duration, but the Raven is cheaper. So I'm not sure what Ty is going to do to to balance that out, but we'll see how that affects the direct strike me meta as well. Thank you, Trilysis has gifted five subs to viewers. No, let the Raven Wars begin. 
This is just regular TBT. <laughs> All right, well, anti-armor missile actually very helpful for liberators, which have very... They do relatively small amounts of damage, so anti-armor missile uh, buffing up that damage significantly in the air. The Terran Wars continue. The center line still very much fought over. Looks like the Grumpy Kitten's making some progress. And if they only have air units and you have ground, you claim the center line. I think it gets claimed on whatever color your first player is, like the, the one spawning the first wave, which in this case is Kachar. I'm not sure if the teams are able to set which player is which wave. I'm like 95% sure they can, because that's actually a lot of strategy there, is the timing and progression of the waves. Carriers have arrived. Interference matrix. Auto turrets. Let's take a look. A gas count. Zero. Zero. Despite everything else, there are no gases. One refinery. On the entire map. It is for our uh, Sky Terran player, Drizal. I don't, it looks like he took it eh, relatively recently. It was just a couple minutes ago. Well, Marauders already making it to the planetary. The shields are down. The Raven Wars. Uh, APM 153 for, for Kachar here on average. As he's just spamming out. I'm sure he has rapid fire and all those Raven abilities. Every good Terran does. At least the auto turret and interference matrix. You choose when to send out your waves. So the waves always go in order. First, second, third, left to right. I believe the play the player uh, position in the lobby determines that. Like one, two, three. And I assume these teams are able to set that. Usually in pickup games or like regular lobbies, you can't really determine where you're going to be. But here, the strategy is essentially three players combined, not three individual strategies. So. Just some extra points here. Reading off of Kachar's semi-beginner guide. You either want to build in the front or in the back. Uh, especially if you want to stack, you build in the back, otherwise you build in the front. A line that's sticking out to me is building in the middle of your base has little to no value. Because it doesn't do anything well. It's just uncommitted to any success. Ooh. Ooh, my. Well, it now looks like a lot of Terran, but then again, the entire team is Terran. Just the sheer biomass here. The scrambles across the board, but the auto turret count is not high enough. The planetary taking some damage. Carriers here, but still more marines and marauders underneath. What kind of upgrades? 2-1. The stalkers at plus 2. Carriers plus 3 attack. But only 2 carriers. Or is that the interceptor count? No, it's the plus 3 attack. It's looking very dicey for the investors here. Their quarterly report is not coming out well at the moment. Tier 3. For, uh, Jer is that Jerzal? Yes. Tier 3. Uh, advanced Ballistics on Liberators, I believe, is unlocked with Tier 3, but... 
Also, battle cruisers. Which are own battle cruiser interference matrix quite effective against them. Raven's holding for now. Gas is taken by the kittens. Not too long ago. In fact, just a moment ago. The sheer strength of the bio. The interference matrices just kind of shutting down the carrier. They do hold. The investors hold. What kind of upgrades are we looking at? Do we have advanced ballistics? No, he finished up. I think it's gonna come down to Dirzal as the Sky Terran. Another anti armor missile. Vikings hit the deck. Gonna try to buffer. He held on to the auto turrets and then unleashed them all. I believe that was a toggle on the ability control. Which slowed down the bio army and you don't want to be trickling out those auto turrets. Now well, here come the carriers. How many ravens left over? Interference matrices lock them down. The carriers are able to participate for at least a little while. Anti-armor missile and the, the stalkers are breaking through. Some progress. The Liberator, oh, plus three armor. Especially on the battle cruiser and Liberators. Very helpful against carriers, against Marines. Anti-armor missile softens it up, but ooh, Liberators. Can we look at the total kill count? We got 40, this is over all the waves. 40, 49, 52, 53. Battlecruiser at only 19. It hasn't been around for long, but also it's almost permanently interference matrix, so. Liberator carrier. Feedbacks. Wait, no, there's some Templar back there. Interesting addition. Feedback's quite helpful. If you can get enough of them, maybe we'll actually see Ghost to counter. Kind of doubt. Feedback on the Raven before anything comes off. Another empty armor miss on the front, but the investors pushing back. Liberators taking chunks out. But cleaned up. About as far as they've been able to push back so far. As much as I like the sounds of marines dying. <laughs> mm. Yeah, they're, the only differences between which side you're on are cosmetic. The cannon and the planetaries, they all do the same. They just look like It's just to have some flavor. The Ravens wiped out here, but the Liberate Storm is completed. The Liberator is starting to stack. Auto turret slapped down. Oh wow, that was that was the most effective stack so far. Some Liberators on both sides, but the carriers, I don't think there are enough here on the Raven side to really deal with this. And the carriers and Liberators are surviving. It's starting to turn around. And now the Liberators and Carriers will support this bio army from Tamillion. Triss, not equipped to really handle that much air. Some, some Thors helping out. High impact mode, definitely having a high impact, but tier three on the way. And now it gets weird because the ground army of the Grumpy Kittens is clearly superior, but the air army is more in doubt. Uh, those are Jerzal's ra- How was he able to keep those back? They did- Ah! So, they're the, the bio units, the handful of bio units that went through, actually allowed the ravens to stay back so they could stack with this wave. 
I'm gonna go ahead and assume that was intentional and good and not throwing. Even though people in the chat are saying it's throwing. I totally knew it was throwing and not intentional. And, and, and it was bad, not good. It's different. It was good. What a move. What a strategery. You see, look. Clear success. It worked. That means it's good. And now they've reclaimed the center line. Which is very hard to do after all this time with less income. They've invested in a huge... It's Raven Liberator. The turrets are slapped down. Fighting one another. Raven Superiority goes to Jirzal. Who can counteract essentially the entire mech army with Interference Matrix. And the bio army with Liberator. It's turning around after all of this, the late game investment. Their planetary is at less than half HP. It does not repair. The shields regenerate, but the HP does not repair. The bio army getting kind of piecemealed here as especially the Marauders have nothing to do but run forward, and they will run forward into the next wave on their own, where they'll get cut down. And the pushback here, Widow Mines being added in. Scans could have to be used. Of course, there's plenty of detection across the board. Auto turrets, interference matrix, the Liberators themselves, 3-3. Three, three. Anti-armor missile, Vikings. Here come the carriers. Jerzal stalled this out for long enough for Nova to show up with some carriers and even a void wreck. Those carriers have three, three, plus three attack and armor. And it's actually completely turning. They are bearing down on the Nexus. And if you think comebacks aren't possible in direct strike, well, they're now targeting the Nexus, we'll see. Once they get locked onto it. Oh, it's at half HP. Not quite. The Bio Army though. There's not enough auto turrets to hold the Nexus itself. Kachar. In defeat. Gifting to the people. And gifting a game to the leaked investors. Their investments. In the later Jenga game, paying off, subs to viewers. eventually the Raven count got too damn high. I think now that we're past that first game where we showed the spectacle, we can talk about the strategery, which is the technical term. 172, 118, the amount of APM it takes to wave your fancy auto turret and interference matrix rapid fire key across the army though. The bio armies, I mean, look on paper, just like in, in your normie craft, uh, this army, yes, that's a very solid mid game, like back and forth. This army is, uh, a little more advanced. Was that a mothership? Well, the builder was a mothership. You can't actually build motherships, I believe. Um, you can change your building worker person who has no effect on the battle besides being the conduit through which you build things. Like, believe it or not, you can't actually put God Kerrigan on the field. <laughs> At least not in this mode. Yeah, the... the so, Jerzon. What was the key there? The totally not throwing move? It's all tied up. We got a series. Game three. Rapid fire should be illegal. Yes, let's let's get it. These direct strike tryhards. You should only be allowed to. The only time you should be allowed to hit your keyboard more than ten times a minute is in chat. To complain that everybody's a a tryhard using rapid fire mostly.
you can get upgrade in, in the units tab. Oh, wow. That sounds like it just like in Normie Craft. It sounds like a waste of money, <laughs> especially when the standard army includes about as much anti air as you could stuff into it. <laughs> oh, here we are. Game three. Kicking it off with tier two so you can start the upgrade to tier two and then cancel it and get all the money back. We'll see if any of them do, as there's not really any harm in starting it, as long as you cancel and build units if you need to. It's kind of like a tech chicken. There is an overlay of army value of some sort, but you have to kind of tell. So part of the issue is the units on the field also count, so they get replicated onto the field. So you just got to ignore those ones uh, and focus on the players who don't have units on the field right now. When to guess. So listen closely, you nerds who are zoning out who kind of like the wreck strike and like the idea and like having my voice on in the background for some reason. I am going to read off of Kachar's uh, semi-basic guide. I, I, I push back at the idea this is a beginner guide that much, but... Oh, well, this part is pretty simple. First gas one. If you're winning, you killed the cannon. You got tier two and got some critical units out to deal with their stack. So I think an example would be uh, either your bio army's doing enough or you got a liberators or maybe like a disruptor or something. Um and you can do significant damage to the next wave. So if you have the momentum, but it probably won't carry through. If losing, you lost the cannon, so you take one gas to try to come back. Kind of like the leaked investors did uh, in that last game, where Jerzal took a gas just to try to get enough to, to stack up and come back, and guess what? Well, oh. How many in total? If you're winning, you don't take more than two gas unless your enemy is overdoing it. Then stay on one less or just match it if you feel covered. So you have the middle line and however many they have. Uh, especially focusing on anti-air in case they try to sneak that out. If you're losing, you take one gas after the cannon if you lose your cannon. Uh, and try to push out between 8 and 20 minutes. If you get more than one, it's usually a bad idea. Because you'll just get pushed back further and you it's very unlikely you'll come back. So essentially in standard mode, one, maybe two. Ever. <laughs> the way you can tell if your opponents have gas is by scanning them. Just like it's it's just like the map hacks that Terrans have in Normie Craft, but everybody gets it. So I mean if you have your suspicions, and there you go. The cannon is taken. You can now, it does cost 25 minerals to scan. So, it's not something you should do all the time. Unless you're in Commanders and you're Rainer, in which case it's free, which is great. I don't know. But, 25 minerals is... For reference, a Marine is 50. So, one, maybe two scans I think you won't miss, especially if it gets you key information. But once you, you get too many scans, and it's too much. I like that balance of it, too. Like, Imagine imagine the rage of Terrans if they had to spend 25 minerals and energy to scan. Crazy, right? I spent 25.75 on this observer, and you killed it with energy. Protoss OP. It's like, did you mean scan or EMP? Well, so far, the grumpy kittens have pushed over the cannon. They picked up one gas on I'm Sucks. Otherwise, we have tier two on the way for Kachar and I'm Sucks, who've been focused very much on the bio here. Ghost, not very good. I think, well, one, uh, uh, somewhat amusingly, with the amount of ravens used, 
The thing is, the ghosts still die to liberators. Terran is very good at countering ghosts. So, I think if you added ghosts in, it wouldn't have any better effect than just adding more ravens. And they're expensive and vulnerable, so... Yeah, just like in Normie Craft, ghosts rarely used against Terran. I imagine if it was like a multi-protoss matchup, it'd be considered, but... If ravens could actually be microed at the rate they are in direct strike, we'd probably see them more. Honestly, I think with the new balance patch, we may see a few more ravens, like the, the ravens in TVP as well. They're just good. They're not incredible, like they're not huge game changers, but they they can definitely have a, a big impact on smaller fights. Oh, planetary picking up some kills. With its dying cast, an anti-armor missile is launched. Oh, up, scrambles. The hinty armor missile really softening it up. I can't. I'm also looking forward to in the balance patch the change of the uh, the anti armor color to a more yellowish, as opposed to the Dorito dusting that makes everyone look the same. It's made TVT a nightmare for a while. Well, the bio army is continuing to push through. The leaked investors, they are much more late game oriented. I mean, it is Liberator Raven up against Marauder Marine. They're relying on the planetary to hold because the air army just doesn't kill this stuff fast enough. It does kill it. It just doesn't do it quickly. A Raven stacked in front. Now, interestingly, the Protoss is the one going for the more uh, ground counter. Adepts from Nova, some sentries for Guardian Shield. I don't think Hallucination is going to find much value here. <laughs> oh, some Templar as well. Oh, empty armor missile. But Widowmines. Storm. Widowmines wandering forward. And not quite enough to push back. We got tier 3 on the way for Triss. Is that a battle... That is not a Manx Battlecruiser, though. You can get a Manx Battlecruiser in Commanders. It just is a skin. But it is the coolest skin, in my opinion. And now it does nothing, because Interference Matrix is still good. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 watch that cool skin get deleted. The scrambles across the board. Disruptor from downtown. Disruptors have a lot longer. They they will. They're a little more forgiving than um, in Normie Craft. They will try to target the ideal targets. At the same time, though, a lot of the units won't clump up as much because of how they're laid out. So, Disruptors, while effective, not not as likely to kill, like, 25 Marines at once. How much is a BC compared to a Liberator? A Liberator is 225, a Battlecruiser is 500. So you can get a, a little over two Liberators. Yeah, Disruptors, I think... Wait, where is Nova? Where is your builder? I don't... Ah, oh, he's just got the SCV. Come back here. Disruptor's 250. Stalker's 105 for Evan. So Disruptor's slightly more than a Liberator. Immortal's 255. Immortal valued over Disruptor. Then again, in a game where you're constantly fighting, a unit that fires one shot and then is on cooldown does lose a lot of value, I think. All right? In, in Normie Craft, Disruptors have more value because you can disengage. Oh, look at the cover! 
Using the auto turrets to try to delay the army. Is it enough to take the win right here? I think so. Ten minutes. For those of you that think of Direct Strike like a 38-minute slideshow, the reason that is is because you and your teammates are terrible. Just like in lower level Normie Craft. A bio army just got the momentum, and, and this time the leaked investors not able to push back. Puts them at a 2-1 lead. I think they really pressed the advantage quicker than in the previous game. The triple Terran? Oh my god, wait, you lied! You lied to me! You said there were no Zergs in the finals! I guess... But for the very first time... Would you just go... on the internet... and tell lies? Because... for the first time... Wait, I can't. Where are, you, where are your builders? Zerglings! Finally! Interesting. We'll see. This game ends in like three seconds. Okay, not three seconds. I, I, why did I say three seconds? I could have said three minutes. That would have been reasonable. Three seconds was not a reasonable estimate. <laughs> I had so many opportunities to not screw that up. The Zerg Rush. Well. Uh, hello? Where is... Is this Nova's base? There's nothing here! Hey! Where'd he go? He's sitting off to the side here. There is actually some strategy to where to place your builder as well. Why? Because if they scan... Then they'll, they may see your builder upgrading. Because there's an animation. Now, I don't think that's a huge factor at all, but... But if your builder... Some players will just casually walk out into the field and upgrade. Only allies can see it. Well, that ruins all my strategies. I've... I have, in order to flaunt, gone out and started upgrading in the middle of the field. You're telling me they can't see that? It's like, check this out. You guys are losing, so I need to. I need to re rethink my my um uh manners. But maybe scan does scout it. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, okay. I think with a Zerg, we can finally go into a real cinematic mode, because we have a little bit of variety here, as much as I like the Terrans murdering each other. Jimmy, give me the Zerg music. It's time. Okay. For a few, for a few minutes. What are those banelings? How okay.
Royal Guard is chilling for 20 months. Mutants!
I really thought it would end, but then it didn't. And then they pushed back, and the Zerg seemed to have been the difference. The Ravagers added in. The Ling Bane was not impressive. I will say, the Ling Bane did not impress. But eventually the Ravagers and the Corrosive Vile that can't really be dodged does seem to have uh, some some effectiveness there. So, yeah, cinematic mode definitely stretched on the, the James Cameron cut of it, of course. But one gas is where we ended up. One, two, one. But the, the corrosive biles ended up breaking a lot of the lines that were not being broken before. Two to two. What do we have next? No Zerg! I don't know if that was a specific counter. But it appears we finally get to see what Kachar was going for here. One, one moment of cinematic. Welcome to the Global Direct Strike League Fund. Uh, it only works on this side of the map. But that was quite a dramatic game. I think it's incredible to me how, how good the game still looks. 13, this is year 13. Of course, a lot of the animations and, uh, not the, not the models or anything, but the animations were updated in Heart of the Swarm 10 years ago, but still. Also, I like the choice of using the Tirador skins. I think they really, you saw there the, the standard versus the Tirador skins, which have like a slight outline on all the units. Look, they look really good in this, uh, Especially cinematic mode, but in general, like Of course the Mecha Zerg is also up there as well on how uh, recognizable it is They've also so Coming from the left side, we do have the leaked investors this time around, going in game five. Uh, on the right, and from the north, northeast, Grumpy Kit. Well, yeah, this is the is this the first PvP battle we've had directly. We have Nova's Protoss up against Kachar's Protoss. Um. Tumillion up against Triss, TVT. Jerzal against I'm Sucks, TVT. So. The grenades bouncing around, not really for damage, but for interrupting and messing up the formations. Any upgrades? Plus one. Against plus one. I think I'm hearing the sound of them manually activating and deactivating abilities. Or, like, from the autocast. Because I keep hearing, like, this interface sound, and I, I haven't been sure what it is. Oh my god, he's activating and deactivating the charge. You can see it over here. It actually grays in and out, which I... Uh, five games in, I, I figured it out. Let's see. I, I don't like stim is another one, but usually you just want to stim immediately. Maybe we can see it on the Zealots. 
we see the other modes. So this tournament is held on standard mode. The most competitive, of course, but the most boring non-co-op units. Just like Normie Craft. Holding on to the... I'm not sure. I, I, I see, obviously, the charge of the Disruptor very effective against Protoss. Can you micro it all? Yes. In fact, micro is the decider in a lot of these battles. You can micro any ability when you're within range of the enemy. And you can also turn off the casting of said abilities, whether it's Reaper Grenade, Stimpak. Um, let's, I, I'm going to Kachar's commentary. You should try to manually micro as many abilities as you can. You can still time the use of most abilities in the menu, um, but manual control is almost better. Almost always better. You need to be using rapid fire. So if you are too lazy to set up rapid fire normie craft, well... If you don't know what rapid fire is, how to set it up and use it, check out. There is a guide that is linked here. I will link it to you guys in the chat live. And, uh, I will try to remember to link it in the description of the YouTube video. You, and you need to have different rapid fire keys for some of your abilities. I have about eight rapid fire keys three of which I use all the time, especially for, like, Protoss Warpins. So that usually covers me pretty well uh, in, in Direct Strike 2. Now, or you could just use my guide, but it wouldn't... It doesn't necessarily... The same principle... It's the same... Uh, it's the same technique, but... Obviously, the direct examples, I'm sure, are different. The direct strike examples, if you would. Well, holding the disruptor shots here is Nova. Let's one Nova go, does he? Firing another shot. Once he can get... Ah, and once he can get the units uh, to clump up or he notices them instead of just throwing the shots out immediately where the zealots might be able to do the work anyways. Wow, well, the Liberator exchanges the overlapping Venn diagrams of freedom. Always a struggle to navigate. Bio armies and liberators. No ma One thing I've noticed, I always make uh, medivacs as Terran. And I've noticed exactly zero medivacs in this entire. There's been Terran, multiple Terrans in every game. So, liberators and ravens just too effective. Medivacs are a liability. DPS more goodly. The disruptors on both sides staring down. Definitely manual. Of all the units, clearly. The Liberators are probably the unit most manually controlled, but it's kind of... <laughs> that disruptor shot curves in. A lot of leeway on those. But Liberator Micro is... Ag it, it doesn't seem like it's being done for the most part, but I'm sure, especially based on the APMs. Uh, that all these players are focused on. Wow, that... They are just eight minutes in. Uh, another wave spawns. The Marauders, is that it? It's almost. A carrier has arrived. Interesting army here. Oh, that disruptor got baited into hitting the mine. Oh, that might just be it. I... Well, how many Marauders? Uh, oh no. Eight minutes. Wow, the bio, uh, the, the medium sized bio liberator army. With a little bit of carrier action on the back line. Well, that, that was the quickest game yet, I think. 
Optimally doing a full air switch. And air, not great at killing marauders when you don't really have any of it. There is that inflection point with the ground army that at some point the air just becomes too strong. This has always been, this is the case in Normie Craft and otherwise. Uh, at some point, the air armies are the ultimate armies. There's a lot of uh, little pings going on. Definitely going over my head and under the radar. Uh, both manual control, I assume, and starting everything off. I, I can hear all the noise. I just don't know what they are. But this could be our last match in the Global Direct Strike Finals. Pride. Bragging rights. A sense of superiority. And also, cold, hard cash on the line. As the Grumpy Kittens. One game from victory. Is that, well, a Zerg. I'm sorry. I, I... The million breaks out the Zerg. I believe he was the Zerg player before as well. Throws. Th wow. Wait. Did ah, he had roaches, which he then morphed into Ravagers. See, I know how it works. I've played this game once or twice myself. The cannon already getting involved. Wait, did they switch sides again? Is it random? But we're back to uh, the leaked investors on the top right, just when I was getting used to it. It doesn't matter, except for me to remember, mostly. Like, the, the, they're symmetrical. But not bothering. So Corrosive Bile does interrupt the attack animation. Kachar. Spending his winnings wisely. I assume second place gets some. Kaka has gifted 20 subs to the uh, Thank you for the generosity. And hopefully you guys are inspired. Honestly... As, as competitive as this is, I, I personally do like Commander's Mode more because Direct Strike, for me, isn't, is, is more of a, a fun still strategy, but slightly less uh, cutthroat slash APM intensive StarCraft. I, I do like the, the Commander's Mode with that. But, of course, Standard is probably more balanced, obviously, just like Normie craft and uh, where you can get the most competitive if interesting. Yeah, the corrosive miles. And a kind of a soft counter to the. Oh, not able to land them on the liberators though. A bit of a mistake there, I think. But wait, those those miles need to hit the liberator. At least three. The Kraken is chilling for 10 months. You deserve all our energy. Yes, micro does very much matter here. I think especially with the, the Ravagers. Manages to swing the Liberator around. There's a bunch of bio. 1-1 one, one done. Again, it's 2-1. I mean, obviously it's tier 2. He has a Liberator. Quite an expensive investment, but I think paying off. How many how many kills is one liberator for Drizal? Only eleven. It feels like more. I don't know. I noticed something called kill fanfare. Is that just to tell? There's no sort of leveling up. Okay, now the corrosive bows. A little awkward. Very hard without any cover there for the Ravagers to stay alive against this.
Another liber a, a very similar wave. Oh, I guess marauders and submarines. Looking more directly to counter. It does look like the cannon's gonna go down here, and the grumpy kittens. Now, not too many steps away from taking it home. Get awkward. Liberator's far enough back that the ground wave just gets chewed up. Even- oh, uh, <laughs> He managed to turn it around, the Liberator, before the units died. And delay going forward. So that way he can participate in the next wave, too. Oh, the Liberator's adding so much damage. It's still- it's gonna- it's going to outlast the entire two waves. And he manages to siege it up, and this wave has no anti-air. Oh no! This one Liberator going to live its entire life. He finally can't help but go forward. <laughs> oh, oh no! Oh, well that was incredibly unfortunate. Rarely do you see units time out at all, let alone this early. And the Liberators fight each other, keeping them busy. This time, the corrosive bows are enough. No friendly fire on them either here. Across the bow, but the Marine DPS. Biles can only hit two or three max. And the planetary, under attack. <laughs> what? It, it, it does have defensive capability. <laughs> Marines not... It, it easily one-shots the Marines. I don't believe the attack has, has splash. It just is a very high damage rate of fire. Very fancy lasers. To save the day... Battle cruisers. It might do splash now that I'm noticing. The, the small one. The battle cruiser seemed like it kind of managed to micro back. Uh, jump, jumps forward. Anti armor missile. A lot of timers and cooldowns being manipulated here. And you can only show one timer on a unit in SC2, so it kind of, it just chooses whatever the shortest one is, I think. Yeah, very small splash, but helpful for killing things like Zerglings and Rune. Which is why flooding units isn't quite the strat. Though obviously it helps you push back in certain situations. Oh, very heroic marine. Unseeds the Liberator to try to keep it alive, but ends up losing it to the hero marine. Battlecruiser, drawing a lot of fire, I guess. Uh, PF splash is ground and not air. I think that makes sense, because air units have a tendency to stack up in kind of weird ways, whereas ground can only stack up so much, so it only counters the smaller ground unit. Yeah, the flying laser bathtub. Just cut the lasers out of it. Yeah. And it's just a flying bathtub now. With minus three armor. That's most of its use at the moment. Anti-armor missile, but enough marauders to bash through. Not that much anti-air left over. Resieging. Marine's not enough. Trying to rese- manages to grab the siege as the marauders are close enough, but... Oh. Holding are the investors, but have they invested wisely enough? The grumpy kittens clawing through. Microbial shroud. Against the Liberator is a great choice. Precast. But will it be enough as the Marines coming forward? Yeah, 
And the Oh, is that too much? They're, they're, the 70. It's it. That, it's over. The last two. Game quite concise, but an effective attack. Four to two for the Grumpy Kittens. With a command of Terran. Uh, the Ravens and Liberators just cleaving through. And the leaked investors are going to have to go back to the drawing board next quarter and come up with something uh, a little bit better. But quite a close series. I think showcasing the strategy and the counter and the fact that Zerg is, needs to be bu <laughs> The Cabal sponsored this message. Um, but a few last things. If you haven't yet checked out Direct Strike, it's free on the arcade. It's always first. I think it's it's played at least twice as much as any other game. Maybe the rest of the arcade combined. The most popular mode is Commanders, but uh, this was standard 3v3. Much like how co-op is more popular than ladder, but maybe a little less balanced. <laughs> uh, very similar, Nick, though. Uh, thank you to uh, Kachar and all the Direct Strike players for uh, sending me both the info and the replays and, and the support. And I hope I get you guys a little more interesting. Here we go. Uh, you can check out, by the way, the links in the description, if Jimmy remembers. We got Direct Strike stats, the SC2 replay stats, and then Direct Strike ratings, which is just like the, uh, well, rating system. You can also find this info on the load screen of Direct Strike. So if you have a potato computer, like I know many of you who play Direct Strike do, that load screen should be long enough for you to be able to screenshot and write those down. So easy enough. Load the game, look at the load screen, then you can get that same info. So... <laughs> Uh, thank you guys for watching. Congratulations to the kittens. Another victory. Uh, I believe repeating last year. Uh, how many years in a row have the grumpy kittens won? The dynasty. Uh, last year they won 4-3, I believe. And it's their fifth win overall in the Global Direct Strike League. Or three. I, I, they're pretty good. So if you want any uh, tips, uh, look out for them. So thank you for watching. Good luck. Have fun. I hope I made your day a little bit better. Uh, I'll see you next time. Stay tuned.